Hello, Brains. I wanted to share a really important update to my life with you, and I wasn't sure how to do that. Oh God, this is happening. <laughs> so I'm gonna be a mom. I guess I can officially say that now. I'm in my second trimester, so I'm allowed to share. Baby's healthy, everything looks good. Okay, as somebody with ADHD, I'm very, very nervous about going into parenthood because I know that I get bored of projects pretty quickly. And this is a project you can't get bored of and then not do anymore. <laughs> if you're raising a child, you're raising a child. I put a lot of thought into whether or not I even wanted a kid. And I ultimately decided it depended. It depended on whether or not I had a partner who was going to be a good dad, who wanted to, to be involved in raising a child too. I knew I didn't want to raise a child on my own but raising a child with a partner who is also gonna be really engaged. I did decide that, that I, I could do that. I wanted to do that. I hear from a lot of parents who have ADHD kids who often are ADHD themselves, and it's not easy. It's really difficult being a parent of a child with ADHD or autism or some sort of neurodivergence. I have ADHD, my partner has autism and ADHD. So the odds of us having a neurodivergent child are not small. We also both have anxiety. So the odds of us having a child who is anxious is also not small. There's a lot out there about how to parent an ADHD child, how to parent a neurodivergent child, because it's not an easy task. It's not like parenting a neurotypical child. You need to use different strategies. You need to do things in a different way. You need to offer more support and more scaffolding for longer, usually more extensive systems, more support. And chances are that child's going to need support for longer because our brains, we have a neurodevelopmental delay. It's going to take us longer to be independent. Add on top of that, the challenges of being a parent with ADHD or a parent with autism, it compounds. And so this is something that my partner and I thought really long and hard about. He wanted kids, like he's wanted kids for a really long time. And that made me feel really a lot more confident about moving forward with having a child. And it's not even some future thing. Like I am pregnant now, like I'm a mom already. The choices that I'm making already are gonna impact my child. This child that already exists, she's just really, really tiny right now, like the size of a lemon. But it's really emotional and it's really scary because I know that I've dropped the ball on a lot of things in my life. I've struggled with a lot of things in my life. And I also had a pretty rough childhood growing up. So I don't have the best role model for a lot of things. And I had to spend a lot of time in trauma therapy undoing a lot of the messages and patterns and stuff that I learned as a kid. I'm nervous because like, I know that all that stuff will come up again for me and for my partner, but I'm also really excited. I'm really excited because I think I also thought that I might never get to this point. I might never get to the point where I felt like I could start a family and I had a partner who like could do that with me where I had a, a career that would allow me to, to do that. And so I feel kind of simultaneously like, yay, I got there, but also like, man, I got there pretty late. So like, that's gonna be an interesting challenge and already has been an interesting challenge trying to start a family this late. But also, am I going to be successful still like once I have that kid that's adding a whole nother layer of challenge and responsibility. I was talking to Dr. Hallowell the other day and he said there are really two times where people come down with ADHD all of a sudden and it's when they start medical school and when they become a parent because there are so many more executive function challenges that suddenly pop up. And so it feels like I've kind of figured out ADHD on my own. How do I get my work done? How do I make time for fun and hobbies and stuff? How do I connect and start to make friends. I kind of have figured out how to live life on my own, kind of. Like I still struggle, I still have ADHD, but I've figured out a good rhythm. I have a life that I like that it is line, in line with my values, but now I'm gonna add this whole other challenge. And I'm lucky that I had the time to figure out how to live on my own because a lot of people don't, right? A lot of people with ADHD have kids when they're younger and haven't figured out how their brain works or how to have a life that they are really into and stuff. And then they have to deal with kids on, on top of that. Yeah, I still struggle, but for the most part, I feel like I've got a handle on things and we're about to throw a wrench in the whole thing. And I'm about to see what <laughs> those of you who are already parents and dealing with ADHD on top of it or dealing with even ADHD kids on top of it are having to deal with. I will take all of the tips. <laughs> like if any of you parents have tips who have been through this, I would love them because a lot of what's out there, a lot of the advice out there, it's kind of like the advice out there for productivity is is mainly geared toward neurotypical people. And so figuring out the ADHD friendly parenting hacks is gonna be an interesting thing for me to explore. My favorite came from my writing buddy, Teresa, who has four kids and a neurodivergent husband and several of her kids are neurodivergent. I asked her how she does it and she goes, I have a mantra, add it, quit. 
adequate that sticks in my head, even as I'm trying to be like a good mom already and stay on top of it and make sure that I figure out childcare because apparently you have to do that well in advance, trying to, you know, figure out the appointments and make it to all the things and eat all the right foods and not eat the wrong foods and all of that. And I just keep thinking of that, like adequate, <laughs> adequate, because I'm a perfectionist and it's really easy to get perfectionistic. And kids are one thing that you can't be perfect at. You just can't. I don't know anybody who's like, oh yeah, like, no, I totally um, did everything, like checked all the boxes, did everything right all of the time. It just doesn't work that way. And as soon as you get the hang of one age, like it changes. And that's true even already. Like as soon as I got the hang of the first trimester, cool, now I'm in the second trimester. Now things are different. And then I'll be in the third trimester and then things will be different. And then, you know, the kid will be here and that'll be real different. So I'm trying to remember that. You don't have to be perfect at it. You just have to be good enough. I'm super excited. I'm glad that I get to share this with you. I'm grateful for the fact that like this job is a job and I'm doing well enough to be able to start a family and to be able to afford a child. Thank you to everybody who watches. Thank you for everyone who comments and shares these videos. And thank you more than anything to my Patreon brains for giving me the steady income that I need to know that I can provide for this child. I couldn't do what I do without you, but I definitely couldn't feel secure enough and stable enough to have a family without your support. Seriously, thank you so much. Diapers are not cheap. <laughs> I'm gonna go drink some water because I have to do a lot of that now. <laughs> and also lay on the floor. I'm so tired all the time. Like, subscribe, click all the things, and I will see you next video. Hi, Reigns.